So, Lior from the Beckley Imperial Research Program, and my main focus of the study is investigation of the eyes closed psychedelic states, so the psychedelic imagery. And I'm going to talk about this in a talk. So, uh, I'm going to talk about alpha frequency and how it's relevant to these studies. And then I'm going to talk about the LSD from our research, the MEG result, and the fMRI result, the cerebral blood flow, and the resting state functional connectivity. So the visual network, we get information when our eyes are open, we get them to the retina and the eye, then it goes to the thalamus, to the LGN, which is over here, and then from the LGN to the primary visual cortex, V1, and to the rest of the visual network. <coughs> I'm mainly going to talk about the visual cortex and the primary visual area, however there are a few studies from the 50s and 60s that are actually suggesting that a psychedelic state is related to the retina or the LGN. I'm not going to talk about that. The main message of the talk will be that primary visual cortex and the visual network are involved in the eyes closed psychedelic imagery and it might sound trivial and I think trivial sometimes it's important especially now that we're experiencing the so-called renaissance of psychedelic studies and just saying the trivial things as a basis for future studies is important. However, uh, just to let you know, in dreams it's not really sure if the primary visual cortex is involved. So sometimes trivial tri things are not that uh, easy to prove. Uh, so I'm not going to say, I'm not going to talk about the source. I'm not going to say that the primary visual cortex and the visual areas are the source of the visual imagery. Uh, I'm not going to say if it's a top-down or bottom-up process. I'm not going to say if it's the subconscious or some information from outside. I'm just going to say that it's involved in the eyes-closed imagery. And I'm not going to say if it's necessary for this activity to be there in order to experience this subjective state. So alpha frequency, which is you heard in other talks also, it's quite relevant to the psychedelic state. Uh, so we can measure with MEG or with EEG different frequencies in the brain. The alpha is 8 to 13 hertz, which means 8 to 13 cycles a second of activity. Uh, and this is quite replicated result from the 50s and 60s and recent studies. So uh, we can do a power spectrum of different frequencies and from 8 to 13, these are, this is the alpha frequency and we can see it's strongest with just, just at rest, the top line with eyes closed in occipital and the visual areas in the back of the brain. And we see that under LSD, this is reduced and you saw it probably in other uh, slides and other talks today. Uh, this was also shown with ayahuasca uh, by Riba and the Barcelona group, decreased alpha power in occipital areas. It was showed in Switzerland with psilocybin, decreased alpha power in occipital areas, and that was attenuated by blocking the 5-HT2A receptor, so the psychedelic receptor. It was seen uh, with Eduardo with ayahuasca, decreased alpha power frequency again, and that relates, so there's a correlation between the plasma levels of DMT in the blood and the decreased alpha power frequency. And it was seen again uh, from uh, Barcelona group this year uh, with ayahuasca, decreased alpha power frequency with ayahuasca that's attenuated by blocking the 5-HT2A receptors. This is the most elegant study, I think, from the showing this result from 1960 from Japan. And they showed, this is the one that has a very clear within subject design. They measured EEG for five hours and stopped every 15 to 13 minutes and asked the ratings to rate the subjective intensity of the eyes closed state. And they can see that the decreases in alpha power relate to the complexity and the intensity of this experience. So there's a very clear basic explanation that I, we can try to have for this uh, decreases in alpha power. And because it's basic and intuitive, I think it's probably the, the one that's kind of closest to reality. And this is what we're experiencing when we're just without any drug, without any psychedelics. When we're with eyes closed, we move to eyes open. We get decreased alpha power. And this is one of the strongest results you get with EEG and MEG. And when you increase the attention to your visual uh, area or if you have more visual stimulus, 
you'll have more decrease in alpha power. So this is how the kind of changes in regular vision. And pretty much the same with psychedelic state, but we're always with eyes closed. So uh, placebo moved to a psychedelic experience. We have decrease in alpha, alpha power, and we have increased in vis visual information. And when the experience is more complex or more intense, we have even more decrease in alpha power. Now, when you look at alpha power in bold, bold is the measure we use in fMRI. It's a measure of activity. You see that alpha power in occipital areas, this is not a psychedelic study. So alpha power in occipital areas is anti-correlated to the bold activity. So when alpha power decreases, bold increases. So alpha power is probably this inhibitory frequency. And when it goes down, activity in the occipital areas goes up. And that makes sense uh, when we're looking at Draudio's, Draudio's here, right? Yeah. Yeah, looking at Draulius paper with ayahuasca, the seeing with eyes shut, and subjects before taking ayahuasca were moving uh, between watching a video to closing their eyes, and this is the blue line, and there's decreased bold activity in the primary visual cortex, but after taking ayahuasca, when they close their eyes, there's no decrease of activity, so there's still bold activation in the primary visual area. And that relates probably to the also changes in alpha power that I showed you before. We're going to have pretty much the same message in this talk from, uh, other, from our LSD study uh, of just the involvement of the primary visual cortex in the psychedelic state. So our LSD study, balance order within subject, placebo control design, all of the subjects were experienced users, uh, 20 subjects for the analysis, we used only 15. One subject did not complete the study due to anxiety. Four subjects had high levels of head movement and we had to throw them away from the analysis. They just moved too much in the scanner. Uh, <laughs> actually, all of the subjects moved a bit more than the placebo, but these moved too much. Uh, LSD was given IV, 75 micrograms. All of the scans were with eyes closed, resting state. We had two scans measuring cerebral blood flow two scans measuring resting state functional connectivity, and two sc MEG scans. That was the time course of the study, so the fMRI scans were uh, around two hours after injection, and the MEG scan was probably a, a bit of more than an hour after the fMRI scans. And you can see here that the MEG is already, the subjective ratings are lower at the, at the MEG scan, but it's still significantly more than the placebo. So the first result we see is, like I showed you before, the decreased alpha power in occipital areas, uh, and that relates to the subjective rating of the eyes closed psychedelic imagery, and that's kind of nice to see that we have this result replicated a few times. And another result is the increased cerebral blood flow at primary visual areas, so the medial visual network at the back of the brain. Uh, so we, we have more blood flow to these, to these areas, and that relates to the subjective state. So more blood flow to the visual areas relates to the visual imagery. Okay, and that's a nice correlation. And it also relates to the decreases in alpha power. So we have more blood flow in visual areas. We have more decreased alpha power. Again, these were an hour apart. Now resting state functional connectivity, we're gonna look at how the visual network is connected to different areas. Functional connectivity means co-activation. So you take, an er you take two areas, you take the bold activations, so you have eight minute scan, you have a frame every two seconds, you get a time course. Now you look at how time courses are moving together. If the time courses are moving together, we call it resting state functional connectivity. So this is an increased functional connectivity. And that's an example here at the right part of the slide of two areas or two networks moving together. They are co-activated. And that's, that's the measure of functional connectivity. So we can take an area, we choose an area, in this case the primary visual cortex, and we see which other areas are activated at the same time as the primary visual cortex. Under placebo, we mainly see the, uh, the rest of the visual network. So there with eyes closed. Uh, and, but there's still some resting state activity in the visual network. And under LSD, we see this result. You probably saw it in the, in the news and in the media. Uh, and we see that when we contrast LSD to placebo, there's a network of areas like the striatum, like the insula, 
angular gyrus, thalamus, frontal areas, middle frontal areas, uh, and all of these increase the connectivity with the primary visual cortex. So there's increased communication between many regions in the brain and the primary visual cortex. Now that strongly relates to the subjective ratings. So as this connectivity, as there's more co-activation, communication between these areas, the, there's more eyes closed psychedelic imagery. And that also strongly relates to the decreased alpha power and the MEG, and that's a strong correlation. Uh, so kind of suggesting that these changes in connectivity have these, this kind of uh, neural, neural basis, that there's a decreased alpha power which is inhibitory, so, and that kind of goes together with increased communication with other areas. So you saw it in the news, that was the Nature News, and they kind of, uh, that they were correct, but other newspapers were sometimes misrepresenting this result. So in that case, that was a correct interpretation, but the caption in this one says areas that contributed to vision were much more active when under the influence of LSD. This result doesn't talk about activity, it talks about connectivity with primary visual cortex. The orange areas were not more activated, they were just communicating more with V1. And some other news magazine didn't really care when they wrote the caption, uh, like The Guardian, under the influence of LSD, lots of orange. Uh, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> but that, that's, that's how the media, yeah, that's how it goes. <laughs> Another result, I wish I had 10 minutes to just talk with you about the method of this result, but I'll just explain it. Uh, and if you want to ask questions later, I, I hope you'll understand. Uh, if you want to ask questions later, uh, you're, free, you're welcome. Uh, so we looked at functional connectivity between different regions in the visual cortex. In this case, we took primary visual cortex V1 and V3, and we wanted to see if the communication between these areas is relevant to the, uh, if the communication between these areas is relevant to the retinotopic uh, architecture. So the visual areas has this certain architecture when they translate the vision from outside to the brain. And it's kind of spatially organized, so when we look at stuff, areas are related to this part of the world, and areas are related to this part of the world, and there's a certain spatial organization of the visual areas. And if connectivity between different visual areas relates to this retinotopic architecture, we can say that the brain is behaving as if it is processing spatially localized information, although the eyes are closed. And we see increased in this measure that we chose, retinotopic coordination. I apologize if my explanation was not uh, good enough. Feel, feel free to ask questions after that. Okay, so uh, the limitations of the study, we had higher levels of head movement under LSD, although we threw away subjects and we were quite strict with the pre-processing. Still, it's a problem. Uh, fMRI and MEG were not in the same time. Uh, so next DMT study they will be, fMRI and EEG will be in the same time. And this is a bit different from psilocybin results. We tried to replicate this V1 connectivity with our old psilocybin data and it wasn't as clear with the LSD data. Hopefully the Swiss group that are also doing uh, now LSD imaging will replicate this result. Uh, which is important for every science and every study to see this kind of thing replicated a few times. So it was important for me to kind of say that the primary visual cortex is involved in the, in the eyes closed experience. And this is a group from California. I'll take an extra minute, sorry. Uh, so this is a group from California, uh, Berkeley. They showed a few years ago that they can reconstruct vision. So this is not without psychedelics. They show YouTube videos to their subject and they record activity from the primary visual cortex then an algorithm learns how this area is processing these, uh, these YouTube videos, and then they show a new video, and there's a trained algorithm that tries to predict what the subject is seeing, uh, and that's a video from their study. Okay, so uh, that's the YouTube video they show to the subject, and that's the reconstruction of the algorithm. So you see some similarity. It's not super accurate. It's fMRI, but but there's a similarity in, in the kind of uh, shapes of things. So what we're gonna try to do 
is to train the algorithm with YouTube videos like they did in this study. But because we think the primary visual area is also involved in the eyes closed psychedelic state, so we're going to try to uh, reconstruct the eyes closed experience and create a video of the eyes closed experience. <laughs> wild, I know, this is wild. <laughs> Yeah. And thanks for David Robin supervising, Mendel for being awesome and helping in the LSD study a lot, of course. Amanda, intellectual and, uh, and financial support, and Wallacea crowdfunding that helped uh, finishing the study. Yeah. yeah. One question. Yes. Yeah, so the psilocybin you had the before and after, yeah. uh, so you can actually, they were in the scanner while they, while they got the psilocybin, so you can actually look at the difference in bold response, but when you just look at, with, with two different scans, the placebo and LSD were two weeks apart, you cannot really do a comparison of bold response because it's not an absolute measurement, and that's why we did the cerebral blood flow. Uh, but you, you have, it has to be in the same scan, and you have to get the come up at inside the scanner in order to do just changes in bone response. Okay, so, you, so you didn't have a, a baseline on each experimental data? No, because no, they just they just got into the scanner while they were already tripping. Yeah. <laughs> I'm quite sure that the speakers will stay around a little bit more. They'll be in this corner. Um, I'd like to thank them one more time and also thank you for your participation. I think it has been very, very interesting. Thanks. Thanks.